So this is the thingamajig lab, the workspace for DJ Spinner, where I, you know, where all the magic comes from. And we're gonna take you on a little brief tour of uh, how I get down. Be in the lab, I get busy with the 3000. This used to be the duo right here, the, the SP1200 and the 950. That's how I started making beats. I actually got this SP1200 from uh, one of my heroes of electronic music, his name is Todd Terry. He was one of the first dudes, or probably the, he is the first dude to bring in samples into the house house world. Like his, his beats was always dirty and grimy. And uh, he gave me this machine back in like 95. And this is how I did like most of the beats that, that came out back in like the raucous era, the beyond real era, the j Live, the DOS FX joints, you know, all those joints did it on this. And then by 98, I graduated to the 3000. And I really haven't stopped using the 3000. This is like the machine that I think hasn't been topped yet as far as hardware drum machines. Nothing sounds like this. Nothing sounds like the SB1200 either, but it's your time is very limited on that. So to me, having this was like having a souped up SP with more time. You could still chop samples up and have the samples cut each other off like you can on the uh, this, the one the output the one single output on the, on the 1200 you get that knock that punch you know what I'm saying you know rest in peace to Dilla this was his machine as well the machine he used to rock on Dr Dre to my understanding has quite a few of them and that's how it gets busy I know there's a lot of new things out there in the world that a lot of cats are getting into you know to make their life easier I'm I'm, I'm adjusting to that as well but from now on. This will always remain in my in my studio, man. I'm not getting rid of it. That's what it is right there. I'm, I like collecting old analog keyboards. I got the Fender Rhodes right here. I got the, uh, the clavinet, string ensemble. This is not an old school joint. This is relatively new school, but I like the sounds that are in it. It's the Korg MS-2000. Um, on the floor over here, if you look down here, I got the Moot Prodigy, which um, I use every once in a while, you know, to get the the Moogie Moogie sounds, synth sounds that I love so much. And I got more keyboards, but they're not here. <laughs> but the, I would say the bulk of my influence musically definitely comes from my record collection. So we're gonna go out here and take a look at it. Well, first of all, I wanna point out is that I am a DJ first, right? I started getting into production later in my career. That's, that was the second choice. But I've been DJing First time I ever got my hands on some turntables and started practicing was, was in 82. You know what I'm saying? So I've been DJing for a long time. And I just want to make clear that as a DJ at one point in New York City, I don't know about how things are now, but you had to be able to play everything. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't about just being into one genre of music. It was all about playing for the people, rocking the crowd from beginning to end. You're talking about, you know, long sets from 10 to 4 till the club shuts down being the only DJ. I did a lot of college parties back in my college career days, and it was all about just entertaining the people. So my collection is not just about digging for breaks and beats. It's not about just hip hop records. It's about having a variety of music, and music that I just like to hear. So we're gonna you know, take you on a little journey real quick. But I wanna start with one thing. You know, my brother Dilla, James Yancey, Dilla Dog, Dill Withers, all of that. Um, he, he's a dude that I've always looked up to, but one thing I want to make clear is that we've been in the game for the same amount of years. So I'm not one of those guys that just jumped on the bandwagon. I've been a fan and a friend of this cat, and I've been a collector of this cat as well. And I copped these when they came out. These are not represses. You know what I'm saying? I got these when they came out. I bought them with my own money. They weren't given to me. Rough Draft, Original New German, Groove Attack pressings, two open ones for play, one sealed one. Seal J88, I bought this, still sealed. Plastic is coming off a little bit, but Busta Rhymes UK 12 inch. This is the only way to get on vinyl the Enjoy the Ride and Show, show Me What You Got instrumentals. And the bootleg 12 inches, the original joints with the uh, Stakes is high, microphone master, 
Master Ace remixes, artifacts, doubles for play. Boop. Cop these in the basement of Mr. Bongo's in, in the UK back in like 97 before they shut down. So for all you MP3 searching Dilla fans out there, that's the way to go. So this corner right here is the hip hop corner. This is where the majority of my hip hop records are. You know, there's stuff all over the floor and boxes and what have you, but this is all cataloged by artists. Um, you know, King Just over here. You got the Jazzy Sensation, Cryptic Crew over here. You know, Jazzy J Productions. And, uh, you know, this everyone from A to, A, A to Z is in this wall. From, you know, Tribe, Dilated, you name it. They're all up in here. Jig Masters, Independent, Rockers, Pharaoh, Old School, Salt and Pepper, Run DMC, Fat Boys, Curtis Blow, Eminem. I mean, they all up in here. I mean, there is somewhat of a cutoff period because, you know, hip hop vinyl has slowed down over the years. And I try to only keep the records that mean the most to me, the records that have lasted the test of time. Um, there's a whole era of underground records that are in the wall as well. A lot of that stuff didn't make it. Sorry, I had to get rid of it, but uh, only the, 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 real, the realness mattered and that's the stuff that I kept. This is another proud moment for me. One of the first mixes that I ever did, remixes early in my career for Stakes Is High, De La Soul. This is the first way it came out. This is the UK import with the DJ Spinner, Stakes Is High remix. This is the second way it came out. It's an EP. It was kind of hard to get at that time. You know what I mean? It's worth a little something if you can find it. It goes for about 50 bucks if you can find it. If you get it cheaper, that's even better. But you know, this is my this is my prize moment because I was sought out by the group to do this. It wasn't a, just a label calling, trying to find remixers. De La Soul had heard about me, I guess through the recent works from that time. And they got me on the project and it's a proud moment right here. This wall right here, represents the jazz, soul, funk, disco albums in the collection, the majority of it. You know, if you look, you can see a couple of things. Some of you beat heads might know what some of these records are. You know, I got Placebo over here. I got Rad Salon up there. You know, this is a crazy, progressive, rock, Polish record. You know, it's all in this wall right here. I mean, I got stuff everywhere, but the bulk of it is right here. Placebo, that's the joint right there, kid. And then this wall right here is pretty much, half of it is stuff that I've done, records that I've come out with, remixes, productions, albums, all of that. So these are some of my 45s. They go across the board from soul, breaks, you know, Afrobeat, jazz, rock, Whatever. I got over here some of the um, luminary breaks, the foundation breaks, like In Peace the President, It's a New Day by the Skull Snaps, Substitution, Promo. This is uh, Disco Tech Soul, Ricky Williams. Y'all who, y'all who know, y'all know what time it is with this right here. This is the joint right here, kid. So these boxes right here are all drum breaks. You know, I know there's, you know, hip hop is in a strange state right now, you know, there was a time where the circle of producers that used to go around all the record shows back in the days and really get their hands dirty and digging mattered. So I'm, I'm still a representative of that circle of, of cats. I mean, I know right now it doesn't really matter anymore, but I like records, I like to dig, and I just pulled out a couple of records that, you know, are some of my favorite breaks of all time. This one right here is uh, it's called Niagara. This is Giant, um, another crazy record. And Abel, it's another break that I like. Just pulling out a few things to, you know, show you where I'm at. And that pretty much sums up the records on the wall. There's records all over the floor, and I got records at the crib. I got records everywhere, son. So there you have it, folks. The Thingamajig Lab, DJ Spinner, Brooklyn, representing all day. High Water is music. Sonic Smash dropping July 21st. Sonic Smash 718 going hard. Thank you for visiting my humble working abode. Peace. Yeah.